Since your students come into the class with varying learning styles and experiences, how did you customize these assignments to work for everyone? How I believe I have customized those assignments to work for everyone is I develop uh, a survey. So the first day of class, I do the traditional introduction of myself and I have group interaction. We tell about each other so we get to know each other face to face. And I show a traditional survey of questions that I would ask that you would sit down with pencil and paper and answer. And then I say, but because this is introduction to distance ed and I'd like to utilize technology, I have them enroll on Blackboard, which is a management tool, and I utilize it because it's more or less transparent and the technology doesn't get in the way of the learning. And I have them answer a survey based on where they are in the program, what their goals and objectives for the course are, what computer tools and applications that they've used in the past, uh, where they hope to see themselves at the end of the class, and some varying other um, pieces of information that I'd like to know. I make sure I have their email. And then I tell them that I'm going to compile this information, and then I will get back to them next week with the results when we meet again. So based on that inf information, I go over in depth what the large project of the class is which is to create a project proposal using instructional design principles to effectively put a course online or a piece of a course or a workshop or a training learning environment based on individualized needs. So based on that, they have the information of what the major project will be. Then the second week of class, they come back with a project idea. We talk face-to-face -face about, individually, we talk face-to-face -face about what that project idea will be. But we do it in a group setting so that everyone can hear what everyone's project idea is. And based on my feedback and information to each individual, it piques the interest in the other individuals. And if something, if I have a question about, about how an idea would work online, then the other people in the group can ask questions too and say, well, maybe this will work for mine, or maybe this wouldn't work for mine. Oftentimes, I have people need to change their project idea. And we don't get too far with just the project idea, but we get a little write-up of what they think they want to do. Then they get the project guideline, and they come back with filling in those components based on information I've given them. And midway through the quarter, I do what's called a small group inventory diagnosis. I give uh, a survey to my students asking specific questions about what about this class is working for you? What, what goals and objectives am I meeting for you? What is not working for you? What parts of this course should I keep? What parts of this course would you like to see shortened? Um, given you were the instructor and could guide the rest of the course to meet your needs for the rest of the quarter, what suggestions and changes would you make? Then I compile all of that information and based on the relevancy and if there's some continuity, I try to make changes. As the assignments take shape, what happens to your students? This is a, an exciting question for me to answer. When I designed the course, I wanted to create an authentic learning environment. I had the goal that when students would actually have to deliver a piece of content online, that they would see the difference between being the instructor and the student. And also because I knew that they were students at the time, they could totally relate to the students in the class. And I'm so pleased with this. Once students teach a piece of information online, they come back with their summation in an in-class environment and they say, now I understand how it works. Now I understand why I needed to develop the strategy. Now I know why I needed to put people in groups. Now I know why I needed to answer their emails. Now I know why I needed to be there very often. I had one example of this quarter of a student who actually wanted to explore the chat room. So when he was giving his summation, he said, oh, I was so nervous as an instructor. He said, I hadn't explored it yet, but he said, I wanted to venture out there, and I was so um, happy to have the opportunity to use the management tool. And he said, but then I was getting all these emails from you guys, and you guys were nervous too. And he said, so I knew I needed to take on the role of how to make it work for you when you, when, you, know, you couldn't get on, or I had, would tell you, well, go ahead and use the phone line. We'll use email. And I had another student who 
during her summation, she said, I was just so interested in actually being able to put something online. She said, I took all of the parts of your syllabus and some parts of syllabus, syllabi from other courses, and she put her syllabus online, and she said, what I really, really realized, June, and she was telling the whole class this, is that I tried to do too much because it was so fun to have that opportunity. And so then she also said how she would change pieces if she had it to do over, over again. And I think that's been the consensus of doing the summation in a group environment. I make it really low key and really personable. We all give feedback to the person that was presenting and they give feedback to us of what they thought worked. And what happens is globally in the class, People learn from the content that's been delivered. Well, yes, this piece would be most effective in discussion boards. This piece would be most effective sent out to do a search. This piece might be most effective developed in a scenario. But above and beyond that, it's like sequencing the information and how it's delivered. Because if you're not careful, you can give so much that students can be overwhelmed with the piece 